Okay, so the first panelist is Christian Baisdell. Christian is an investment manager at Nimbus. His role includes evaluation of possible deal opportunities, deal execution, and hands-on management support of companies in the portfolio to help them uh, grow and perform uh, more accurately or prof uh, proficiently. He believes that a key element in being an entrepreneur is being fully invested and committed and not just working for a paycheck. Okay. He has an MSc in IS from ISYA at Georgia Tech, 2002. And before that, he has a Diploma of Industrial Engineering and Management from Kalju Institute of Technology. Thank you. <laughs> Alexandra. Okay. Alexandra Blitz is a product manager for innovation and AI at Tomatech at uh, Imaging Systems, a worldwide leader in diagnostic and med medical imaging in healthcare IT, which is part of Philips Ultrasound. She has served as an entrepreneur for the last two years at uh, Tomtech to translate, and, uh, translate novel interdisciplinary research into products. She has an applied mathematics degree from TU Munich, Munich in 2011, and she spent time at Georgia Tech in 2009 as a uh, visiting, um, visiting student. Uh, she currently lives in Munich with her husband and uh, currently has, let's just say, two children. So. <laughs> okay, so next is Jean Paul. Jean Paul Christophe. <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> so he's the founder of uh, Bitmakers. Uh, after having contributed to several uh, activities in involving uh, medical device innovation through startups and companies, as well as testing uh, from nuclear technology to biotechnology. Through Bitmakers, he is combining electronics and software technology to advance the core technology of the company. Jean received a, a dual degree from Georgia Tech in mechanical engineering and from Les Arts a Metier Paris Tech. His passion is to combine mechanical and electrical engineering as well as software engineering to drive innovation. Thank you. So one of the things I wanted to sort of start out with today before we get to the questions is that when you heard about what we're doing here at Georgia Tech, we're really looking at uh, taking our background and our, our passion of innovation, which Georgia Tech has been displaying for years, and bringing that into the realm of entrepreneurship. And so the way I kind of look at this is that, you know, if you just look up the definition of an entrepreneur, it's someone that takes on uh, they actually operate a business and they take on a higher than normal risk in order to achieve some level of success. And so when you look at it, you know, maybe from the engineering perspective, I would say it's really looking how to take innovation into the marketplace to impact the world, but managing risk. And so the balance of those two can be done either inside of a company or by starting your own company. And so that's what we really want to focus on as we talk to our panelists based on the range of activities that they've gone through. And so if you look also at, you know, from, from me being a professor, when I'm looking at my classes, I, I'm, I'm proud of what we do inside of the class in order to, say, translate hard skills to the students. And oftentimes that's through the normal coursework. And then we add on labs to give students these experiences where they go from the class into the lab and they learn how to apply things. And so if you look at what we're doing with innovation, actually the things we're doing with things like CreateX, the things that we're doing with our other entrepreneurial activities is really the laboratory for innovation in the school. And so what it allows students to do is take that risk in a classroom setting and learn how to propagate that. And hopefully it will translate to something that, that works in the real world in terms of either inside of a company or starting your own business. And so I want us to sort of frame the, the conversation around that in terms of what you have seen and, and hopefully uh, the audience will get involved in this discussion as well and ask um, some very good questions. So I'll just kick it off with the first question. And then the first one is uh, fairly easy. Do we have a microphone okay, yeah. right there? So just, you know, just briefly describe, uh, you know, currently what you're doing in your, your company and your path, your pathway to getting there. So um, as you explained it at Bitmakers, we are developing our technology, medical technology, um, which is based on uh, electrocardiography. Um, when I created the company, we uh, decided to go to a part peculiar pay, uh, path. Basically, we decided to develop our technology and finance that with uh, strong technical skills, um, so which 
put us put us uh, working on um, bring us uh, working on several projects. So basically, we had companies from startup to bigger companies to develop uh, either medical equipment in uh, ultrasounds uh, for imaging, for example. We, for example, this year we work with uh, Ecole Polytechnique on. Um, uh, nanoparticles uh, type of technology. We developed a uh, sensor for them so we can uh, extract data uh, and get meaningful results. Uh, we also work for EPFL uh, developing uh, ultrasound technology um, based on the, on the MEMS uh, they develop on Ganyan nitride. And, uh, we develop uh, the entire reader around it on uh, bio um, bio uh, identification, basically. So, with the company, wh what I loved with uh, Georgia Tech and I really enjoyed during my study was uh, tech and working on tech and broad type of application. So, uh, that that is something that is really meaningful today on the company, and uh, we we will discuss it maybe a little bit after on other uh, question you have, but uh, also on. Um, pluridisciplinary. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you have to learn many, actually many jobs and many skills. So uh, at Tech, you, you, you grab that and you, it helped me uh, you know, to, to make the step to become an entrepreneur because you have to work on tech, but you also have to be good, as they said on the video, on customer discovery, understanding uh, your business on finance, on um, jurid uh, jurisdiction, and, um, and uh, legal stuff. So it's many, many work and many skills you have to develop on uh, a tech. Uh, I actually, uh, on my side, I really prefer uh, studies uh, abroad in the USA because uh, it gives you that multidisciplinary uh, perspective which we kind of lack in France, I think. Thank you. Thank you. So I agree with a lot of things that you have said, especially the interdisciplinary part. Uh, you have to have a lot of skills, but um, let's start from the beginning. I'm product manager innovations. As I mentioned at TomTech, we do uh, echocardiography, um, now in the scope of Philips Ultrasound. And um, my specific project or product is uh, AI applications and automatic measurement of the heart during or after acquisition of those images. Um, and uh, my job is actually three jobs in one. One of them is the classic product management, um, communicating with customers, uh, organizing developers, etc. The second part is uh, basic research. I am also part of a clinical worldwide study as an investigator together with doctors. So I'm a researcher as well as a product manager. And the third part is um, I'm the data manager for AI, which in health uh, with HIPAA and uh, GDPR legislation um, is actually also a legal perspective and a risk management perspective. How can you deal with the data? Um, so this is kind of this entrepreneur spirit that, that you were also talking about, that you have to have a lot of different fields of expertise to be able to perform your daily work. Um, so this is my, my path, and uh, I enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I also agree, uh, and uh, this multidisciplinary uh, thing and also the very international environment at uh, Georgia Tech at ISYE we had like, I don't know the statistics, but uh, I would assume it's like 50% of international students, yeah, and, and that really has uh, left an impression. Um, at uh, Nimbus, uh, we are, so I'm an investment manager, uh, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, we are buying um, companies, yeah, uh, not startups, but it's uh, more old economy businesses and often in special situations. So uh, sometimes out of uh, bankruptcy, uh, corporate carve outs, um, uh, whenever. So we are buying uh, badly performing companies for a cheap valuation and we are trying to improve them. Yeah? Uh, and it's always uh, old economies. Yeah? I'm an engineer, uh, I, I want to walk through uh, production, uh, through a steel shop and, and see uh, environments and uh, get a feeling of uh, where the improvement uh, lies. Um, 
Now that job includes uh, finding these uh, uh, businesses to buy, um, uh, so having that network uh, of uh, deal opportunities, um, then negotiating uh, the transactions, a uh, lot of legal stuff. I've never had any uh, legal classes, but uh, there are sometimes weeks where I'm almost purely working uh, like a uh, hobbyistic uh, lawyer, yeah, uh, uh, negotiating hundreds of pages of contracts, uh, and in some of the restructuring laws in Germany, I think I'm just by uh, uh, learning it on the job, I, I'm more uh, experienced than many other lawyers because I've done that for 10 years now in, in this very small uh, niche. So, and then later on, uh, helping these companies to improve. Um, we, we call ourselves hands-on investors and uh, we really go into uh, the management, uh, sometimes as uh, on a project basis, sometimes really uh, as a, uh, in a board position uh, to improve these companies. So that, that's a, a skill set that you would never learn at university. Yeah, I mean, uh, this range from uh, industrial uh, to uh, commercial and uh, uh, legal topics, uh, you, you don't get that anywhere. Um, so for me, uh, the Georgia Tech and, and also Karlsruhe gave me a sound uh, 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 education. Um, all the statistics that I learned, I never needed anymore. I mean, today it, it's, it, it, it's typically, it's just, uh, 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 I plotted in Excel, uh, X, Y graphs, uh, some regression curve, that's typically the extent that I need today, yeah? Um, but I, I've learned a, a lot of uh, how to structure and solve problems in, in these uh, uh, meta uh, uh, topics, yeah? Uh, and what I did between university, which helped me prepare, was uh, a management consulting. I've been five years at a Boosen company, uh, so that's kind of the uh, later education which I took uh, in that uh, consulting business. Thank you. So, so the next time I get ready to try to talk about changes in curriculum with my faculty, we should pull the tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really, um, one of the things I do want to ask is, uh, you know, when you look at the university environment, we do pride ourselves on, you know, developing those hard skills and sending you through all of these classes. If you could give us advice on things that we should try, what, what are some of the things that you think would be valuable for students coming out today if they want to operate in this, this realm of being sort of an entrepreneurial person, starting their own company or having that spirit inside of a company? Are we teaching the right things or are there things that you would suggest that we should change? I, like that. Yeah. Um, I think the, the whole engineerial and, and um, applied way of thinking that, that you teach is already top notch. So this is, this is the basis for everything else that we have learned also in legal, um, such about the way of thinking that, that this has given us mm -hmm. is invaluable. Um, what is probably needed is, um, as I take from design thinking, the, the empathy part. So how c do I empathize with a customer, with somebody with a completely different mindset than I am, for example, a doctor? So this, this would be a soft skill that, that is needed. Yeah. Anyone else? I would just add one thing. is um, What I really liked also, as you said, uh, in terms of pragmatism is a key key point with uh, Georgia Tech. It's really good and it helps you uh, later on. But uh, I also had the chance to be able to follow some courses at uh, with Emory University on medical. Uh, and it was one of the good way to, to look at things from the medical perspective. So it's another asset uh, that was really valuable, at least for me, uh, to be able to, you know, look around and follow the course, any courses you, you would like. Okay. Um, take a seat. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, just you noted. So, um, uh, yeah, one, one thing to add. Um, I, I remember uh, not many, but few professors which uh, had been uh, in industry before. And, and these were, for me, uh, some of the most um, uh, enjoyable classes. Yeah. So, uh, and I think that that's something which I would uh, like to see more often. People from, from industry uh, uh, having guest lectures, uh, uh, and then getting back to industry uh, eventually, uh, and, and yeah. Okay. So some way in bringing in that, that industrial experience, um, 
would it, uh, I guess, if you, if you looked at faculty that have done things like had the legal aspects in their, their background um, that have dealt with starting businesses, would that be helpful? Or? No, for, for, um, well, when I was a consultant, um, mm -hmm. fresh from university, I, I went to, and I was charged a couple of thousand dollars a day, yeah, and I had no experience. I just uh, uh, believed that I was, was smart, and I tried to explain to my clients that, uh, just conceptually that uh, uh, this needs to be true. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is what you need to do, and here's the uh, uh, mathematic proof uh, uh, that, uh, yeah. On the, uh, later, I had a, a colleague that used to work uh, in industry before, uh, and in the same situation, uh, he told uh, the clients, well, um, I've been plant manager, I've shut down a couple of plants, uh, uh, I went through this uh, experience myself, and um, trust me, it, it works, yeah? Uh, and where I was trying to theoretically prove that it works, uh, he had the experience and uh, received much more uh, confidence uh, by the client. Uh, and it's the same for me with the professor uh, that tries to prove me theoretically, uh, uh, theoretical concepts, and, and for some classes that's perfect, but uh, it's just uh, enriching if you also have the uh, practical uh, experience uh, classes. So if, you're, if you do want to be an entrepreneur, um, or you at least want to take that entrepreneurial uh, mindset as you, you leave the university and go into the real world, should you go corporate or should you start your own? And how do you decide? How do you make that decision? Yeah. Um, I, I'm always questioning myself if, if I did the right choice to, to start early as a process, because uh, you face many issues and you make so much uh, mistakes and you, you have to learn the hard way. So I think um, it's, it's really valuable to have uh, an experience on the field with, as you said, people who have the experience can back you up and help you grow uh, with, uh, with their own experience. But meanwhile, sometimes I, I, uh, I say myself, it might be really hard to, to do that 10 years after maybe when you are 40, because with, you will still have to, to go through uh, strong, uh, strong developments and hard core stuff. And uh, uh, when you are more settled, it might be harder to, to go that way and to accept the challenges and to face uh, all of that. So I don't know. I, I don't have, uh, but starting early is cool. So if you stick to it, if you stick to it and um, put your energy, uh, at the end, it will uh, it will pay off. So uh, and late. actually, I, uh, we started with many friends uh, five years from now, and uh, I start to see friends who did their exit. So um, I know it's possible, it's feasible. I can tell you that uh, almost 50% of them have done it, and um, some of them are really happy. Some other are less happy, but they have the check and okay. Uh, but what is really important to, uh, through all of that is the human experience and all the things that make you grow. Um, I think Marta may have a talk about it, but we went uh, in March at Georgia Tech with uh, Gilles Châtelard, uh, Francois Malasne, and it was a really great experience, really great exchange, and um, you see that uh, on a human perspective, uh, being an entrepreneur, it's, uh, uh, it makes everything concentrated because you, uh, you don't have the diluted version of it. You have to handle all the problems, so you have to, to be here and to be in the mingle of that. So for me, uh, in terms of human exchange, uh, because you have to face with all of that, it's really a growing experience um, to be an entrepreneur. And starting young makes you learn maybe f a little bit faster and uh, the other way. So, sorry. Was wrong. <laughs> um, I would say it depends on the person. And it depends also on the company where you work if you go corporate in the end. Um, for me, starting my own business isn't an option because I don't want to deal with the overhead of legal and financial uh, insecurities. Um, but being able to be creative and to incorporate all the spirit of, of entrepreneurship in a corporate environment, and I'm in a lucky position that we're still a small company within a big company, so we can take 
a lot more and a lot faster risks than uh, Philips Corporate will be able to do um, is the right place for me. So this is a very, very personal decision and uh, everybody has to take it for themselves. Yeah, I think that that's a good summary. Uh, uh, one more, uh, and I have really high regards uh, uh, for uh, doing this uh, so early uh, in this real uh, startup uh, entrepreneurship. Um, uh, I think an advantage of doing it uh, early is, uh, I went through that exercise a couple of years later when I moved to Nimbus. Um, uh, when I now have uh, young children, uh, I've bought a house, uh, and then I have to invest uh, every penny uh, into uh, uh, our buyout opportunities, where maybe if I had done that uh, five years or ten years before I uh, uh, got children would have been a, a better timing, yeah? Uh, and uh, you don't have uh, so much time, and uh, so I think starting a bit younger with uh, uh, this uh, startup is... Uh, has a lot of b benefits. Uh, on the other hand, you have to have that idea, right? Uh, I, <laughs> uh, m maybe I was not the, the, the person uh, to do it, uh, and I didn't have any uh, wild idea. And then a uh, couple of years later, I got my opportunity uh, 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 buying into uh, distressed existing businesses. Yeah? So I think there's just many ways. You just have to catch your opportunity once uh, it's there. Could be later. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> on the <other> side, <laughs> when you have the stress, then it's tough to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's another issue. <laughs> All right, I want to uh, open the floor to uh, questions, if you would have uh, questions for the uh, panelists. So can I uh, just keep going? That's good. Yeah. I was convinced that I'm going into science and becoming a professor, doing my PhD, doing the complete scientific route when I was at Georgia Tech. I was so sure of it. I'm extremely sure I'll never go that path. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I started actually my PhD and uh, I quit the program because it wasn't applied enough for me. It wasn't my kind of world and I wanted to have a family but I wanted to do a very innovative job that has real impact. So that's a completely different path that I would have envisioned 10 years ago when it was a tech. Yeah, uh, I mean, this kind of uh, uh, distressed private equity investment, I would say that in Germany, maybe there's 100 professionals. Yeah, it's a, such a small niche. Uh, there was no way that I had this in mind. Yeah, uh, I, I thought that I... Uh, my grandfather used to be an uh, engineer at Siemens, yeah, uh, uh, being a plant manager later, and that was uh, what I wanted to do, yeah, being a production manager somewhere in the old economy industry. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it just developed somehow. And I think it's, uh, particularly in this entrepreneurship, I think that it, there's no, these are so uh, exceptional uh, paths that people take. Uh, there's no way that you have this in mind when you start your uh, 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 undergraduate program. To learn those things fast. Thank you. Uh, you have to work with the right people. So um, what you don't get because you are alone doing your, your business, uh, you have to, to pay someone uh, that you have enough confidence with. So it will provide you with uh, the right insights and uh, experience so you make the right decisions. So definitely you have to work with people who have gone that way and can tell you the, the right thing to do and the other thing you don't want to do. So. Uh, not only working with the right people, but knowing the right people 
your your friends, your your complete network of, of people you've studied with, they're a valuable resource. Get a coffee, talk with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot is just uh, from own failures, experiences, uh, and I think that that's what's uh, more challenging from uh, for startups uh, right out of university that you're just lacking this own experience. Yeah, so it's it's much tougher, uh, um, and maybe the risk of failure is a bit higher. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, um, the the other is um, for me. It's uh, uh, from colleagues. Uh, we are luckily a team of uh, twenty people or so. Uh, so if you have this uh, this group around you. Um, and you have sparing partners. Many companies that are distressed that we see, um, typically it's a uh, managing shareholder, uh, just one guy uh, which has been there for himself uh, for 20 years and um, who did not have uh, any sparing partners uh, or, or such. So yeah, you need to have to have people around you. So you want to go ahead? <laughs> So what would you do or have done differently, even though you learned from it? So just one thing, each one of you. At, at the end, everything worked out quite nicely. Uh, of course, I've maybe shortcutted a, a couple of uh, uh, bad developments, but uh, I'm pretty happy where I am uh, right now. Um, so, uh, I mean, th there, there was many things that I could have changed, but uh, at the end, it's still uh, I've I've learned my my, my lessons and, and made experiences. So uh, I'm not feeling bad about uh, any of these. Oh, I didn't say feeling bad. Yeah, it's yeah. What you would have done differently? Learning from them. No, I'm yeah. No, uh, uh, we, we talked with Magnus uh, over there earlier about serendipity, and uh, this is a strong factor. Sometimes you're in the right place in the right time, and things work out even if you thought they didn't in the beginning. Even quitting my PhD, I learned so much from the whole experience. I wouldn't change it. I still would go the same path and quit it and <laughs> get on with my life. Some people have a knack to recognize Taking decisions. I think. Okay. Okay. I, I'm just um, yeah, I, I, it's my story, so I would do it again. But uh, in the future, I won't do it. Uh, I will do it differently. So if I have to start over a company, because I've learned all that stuff, and um, I, I know that it would be radically different. So did many mistakes. So you have to learn from it, but. Yeah, you have to enjoy the ride, so yeah, well. <laughs> that's the end. You wouldn't know how to do them if you hadn't done them in the first Yeah, so. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, I think. And, uh, because even I know successful entrepreneurs and when you know the backstory, uh, they are not that happy. Uh, there is always a thing. Um, there is no uh, yeah. pink uh, story, and uh, it's always uh, there is always a dark side. So yeah, you have to be <laughs> to know <laughs> to know the truth. <laughs> you have a question? Okay. Oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the question was whether uh, we, uh, when we were 20, it would have better uh, benefited from um, uh, CreateX. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I, 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 uh, 
I I think if you first have to have uh, that business idea. Uh, if you don't have that idea, then the whole uh, CreateX environment, I'm not sure, maybe it helps you to develop an idea, uh, but I was not really desperately searching for a uh, uh, startup or entrepreneurial idea back then. Yeah, I was happy with the idea of working somewhere in industry and then uh, took that path uh, later. Yeah, um, So uh, maybe I would have been uh, excited by CreateX and then uh, would have been more eager to go that way earlier, um, but I don't know. Um, I think if I had an idea, it would certainly have been an uh, advantage to uh, to improve the chances uh, of success of that idea. Yeah. So I, I think it, it definitely makes sense to to have create X, uh, but I think it's not there. There's characters uh, that are just not uh, startup characters. <laughs> Or just not ready at age 20 yeah. to be one. Yeah. And sometimes going fast may not be the solution as well. Uh, for my side, my perspective, I don't know if it will be a successful ending, but uh, what I know is I, I needed time uh, to learn things. And uh, I'm kind of puzzled about this, you know, uh, go fast, fail fast. Uh, that can be interesting, but it's not my perspective. Well, when you do things, I prefer to do it right, and there is always value uh, of a good work and a nicely planned um, uh, trajectory and uh, ambition. Um, you have so many examples of uh, successful entrepreneurs. I don't know if you for example, learn about Slack, uh, how this company started. They started with uh, a, game, um, a game company, they failed, they figured they developed a nice tool that was really working nicely for uh, communicating uh, between users and uh, players, and they started Slack out of it. So uh, if you do it right, there is, I, f I believe there is always value of uh, a proper work, uh, something that has been done carefully with um, good thinking. So, and there is a book that is really interesting, uh, which is, if I recall well, um, Think Fast, Design Slow, or maybe the other way, but it gives you. <laughs> 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 uh, but it gives you some insight to you know play. Sometimes you have to be fast, and sometimes you have to take time to you know uh, stick on it. Hey, I just want to quickly mention, I think it's uh, important to, when you look at what we're doing at Georgia Tech, that there is the CreateX, um, let's say, pathway that you can send students with an idea and they can learn the ideation phase and go all the way through building uh, some sort of product and launching a company. But then we also have just spaces where students can come and tinker and just work on their own ideas. There's no pressure to start a company. Mm -hmm. but. Just having even that aspect of getting together and just trying things out, I think that entire ecosystem is what helps to build this on this innovation aspect of Georgia Tech. And the entrepreneurial part of it is one part of it. And so hopefully with what we're doing there that it's giving students, even if they don't decide to start a company until they're after 40 or something like that, <laughs> like me, <laughs> but uh, they, they have this ability to learn how to go out and to start innovating and trying out ideas and getting that part down, exercising that part of, uh, of entrepreneurship. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Hi, guys. Yes. So I left my, my corporate job three years ago uh, to bootstrap also a startup. And um, I found that the biggest challenge uh, was maybe not even the idea or uh, or the or the funding, but uh, the people actually that uh, that you start working with. So finding your partners or my partners took me like five years before, and even more harder, I think, it's to find the the very first people and the core team that will be the base of your company. So that was for me the biggest challenge. What would you say uh, was or is for you uh, the biggest challenge today as uh, as entrepreneurs or as uh, as, uh, as early, uh, you know, startup members or investors uh, in uh, in your entrepreneurial uh, world. And also, yeah, the second question is: Have you used the Georgia Tech uh, community and maybe a uh, network to find talent, uh, uh. which is related to my challenge, at least? Sorry, I haven't used the the second uh, yeah. <laughs> part, but. Um, the, the challenge is always people, whether you're doing the startup or 
working in, in your company job. So I, I came in two years ago into a team that was existing for more than 10 years. And I was way younger than most of them. Um, and still I had to be leading the team in terms of product development. So that's also a challenge. They, they, are stuck, they are stuck in their ways and you have to break through this without breaking them. So this is a challenge that, that isn't unique to startups, I would say. But how do you find uh, the people? Like, what's uh, into to like? I guess you have to hire as well people. Like, no, what's, uh, I'm not hiring. I'm okay. working with the people that are there. <laughs> so we have to arrange with each other in a way. So that is always true. Whether you hire or uh, get into a preset team, so to say, you just have to find uh, the right angle, and I think uh, you can make it work. I mean, I, I fully agree. Uh, finding the right people is uh, so difficult. Um, and uh, for us, when we typically buy low-performing companies, typically we don't have uh, 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 the uh, high-performing management teams uh, there. Um, and uh, when I started, I tried to kind of compensate all this. Uh, so I spent time in these companies uh, doing projects and trying to uh, uh, to to yeah to to complement all, all that deficits uh, in the management and there's no way that as a single person you will uh, be successful yeah uh, and right now uh, I just much quicker take the decision to uh, replace people yeah uh, really more the the American way I, <laughs> I guess yeah uh, and uh, and it's so difficult to find good people uh, and uh, we've tried it with headhunters but I would say there's like a fifty percent uh, failure rate uh, even if I invest into a uh, uh, significant money into a, a professional search so um, we, we try to do it uh, through our network uh, that's where we find the best people um, uh, friends and friends of friends uh, someone where I have personal uh, uh, recommendations uh, later when we have a coffee I, I can tell you that there's unbelievable stories from uh, uh, for, from managers which we uh, recruited things you you won't believe yeah uh, and uh, if I have personal uh, references, that's for me the, the only thing to um, really be sure. But uh, often enough, we have to uh, realize that there isn't, if there are special industries, we don't find, I mean, if I need a commercial director for this very particular industry, uh, often I'm not successful in our network, and then I still end up with professional searches, even though... Um, it's uh, not really satisfactory, but I don't have, yeah, I, I agree, it's so, so difficult to find them. I, I, I don't, uh, I, I'm not convinced by, uh, that, that there's so many searches, uh, and uh, what I really need is, uh, is quality. Uh, and uh, I don't care whether Typically here we are paying one third of an annual salary uh, for a professional search as a fee, uh, and, and that that's fine for me. If I find the uh, if I have to fill a key position, I, I don't care how much that costs. Yeah, so uh, having a less expensive uh, uh, searching channel um, is not really uh, the decisive criteria for me. The question is how do I reduce the risk of picking the wrong guy. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, I'm more looking for direct searches, not just for advertisements, but uh, f uh, yeah, someone who's doing a direct search. Okay. I think we had someone in the back. I just wanted to add uh, maybe something. I think your question was more about the how. Yeah. And, and you weren't necessarily talking about hiring either. You were just talking about who are those people that I can kind of rub heads with and bang ideas against the wall. Um, uh, what country are you in, if I may ask? Multiple. Okay. Yeah. Because I, well, I work, I, and I'm glad, because I work from the perspective of you're a small guy, or you're a guy in a small village somewhere out in Bayern. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> far out from everywhere. Um, you can do the obvious things like LinkedIn, Zing, Facebook, whatever. Um, but the IHAKA, the Chamber of Commerce, is a great place to just talk to people and they'll say, oh, you're in whatever field you're in. 
maybe you should talk to these people, or maybe there's a, a meetup group. Um, if you're, it's a lot of mostly programming on meetup, but anyway. Um, and if that doesn't work, go and find yourself a good business consultant and pay for one or two hours, take him to dinner, whatever, or her. Uh, you can find a lot of great ideas that way. And if you develop a relationship, he might continue or she might continue to meet with you for free every once a month and just, you know. Um, so if you can't really find people that's full-time, those are just people that you can, you know. I know you probably know all those things, but I really think the Ihaka, I've worked with them before, and I think they're really great here. It just depends on which region you're in, really. Yes. An another question? Um, so we mentioned that people are very important. I think there's also this thing, this uh, confidence once you have a good idea to actually go out there and create the company. Um, and I think this is some, this is where create X and like uh, programs like this are, are good because you can already try something. And you know it's it's actually possible. Um, maybe a question to you, especially uh, to you. Um, how did you make the decision, or how when did you know that you could actually create a company with your idea? That, that was typically the long process for me. Uh, and uh, the confidence I got, actually, I got it from the project I worked for. Uh, because, I, as I told you, we developed the product. But in meanwhile, we were helping other companies to develop. And we provided our technical skills uh, to help them developing their own products. So uh, actually, we, we, we gained confidence by working for others. And it gives us also some time to fine-tune our technology and to better understand the, the market as well, uh, which is a pretty complicated market uh, if you want to fit in. So um, that's where, for me, uh, we, we got confidence. It was a slow process, uh, um, and we got it from, from our experience. So it was not um, uh, from the beginning uh, type of confidence. OK, I think we're getting uh, close to the end here. And so I, I just, I, as we wrap up, I just wanted to ask one question as we close. Is there something that Georgia Tech can do to help with the startup and entrepreneurial community here in Europe? And just as you close, do you have any closing remarks and just sort of answer that question? Well, I think one of um, uh, what Marta tried to, to start in March and what uh, you've started with this event uh, that is now starting to, to, to picking up um, is, is a good way to start. And to, to make the spark happen. Um, I think, um, from my perspective, what was really important was to visit Georgia Tech again after a few years and to meet with um, the, the research there and to see down the line how can we transform this type of event in real connection and real collaboration. I, I think maybe it it's one of the challenges. Um, I don't know what are the intention of everybody here. Is if they just want to grow the network or maybe start a collaboration, but um, maybe having a, a collaboration with academics uh, could be uh, something that could could grow by uh, strengthening the link between university and the people who are working now out of the university. And I'm looking for that. Uh, so that's my interest. And uh, as Martha also mentioned, it starts with the students. So connecting students to people who are in industry or, as you said, uh, trying to build up a startup is also a good, good way to encourage the entrepreneurship. Yeah, I think uh, CreateX in Atlanta is, uh, is just perfect. I'm not sure if... Uh, you can replicate it here, uh, and maybe you shouldn't. We have it in try. It. I mean, uh, but but to to give access to that, uh, the other thing for me is mentoring. Uh, I personally uh, I benefit a lot from some uh, older mentors, formal and informal, uh, and uh, I had a few uh, with even outside of formal mentoring systems. I sometimes had. Uh, uh, students or young alumni uh, contacting me, uh, uh, seeking me as a mentor for something. And if we formalize that, I think that's very important for uh, young entrepreneurs to have some people who already went through their lessons um, to guide them and uh, also give access to their uh, network. Okay, well, 
want to thank you all for uh, coming today and sharing your insight, and thank you all for your participation. Let's thank our panelists once again. Thank you.